What's up guys, we're going to be running a reflected cross-site scripting attack and we're going to do so by injecting into a JavaScript string. Now in the lab title, it tells us that angle brackets are HTML encoded. And the reason why it's telling us that is because in a previous iteration of the lab, we could launch a reflected cross-site scripting attack just by making use of angle brackets. So we could do something like H1, we could inject arbitrary HTML, but we can see that's not the case. And that's because these angle brackets are being dealt with correctly. So we need to find another method of injecting into the page to launch a successful cross-site scripting attack. Now let's start with an arbitrary search string. This is always a great place to start when looking for any cross-site scripting attack vectors. And let's fire up the DOM browser and let's see if we can find our injected search term on the page. So we actually have three matches there. We have the echoed search term inside H1 tags. We then have our search term inside some JavaScript. Now, based on the title of the lab, this is very likely what we're looking for. We also see the injected search term as part of the query parameter in the source attribute on that image tag. But we're going to focus on that JavaScript. So notice the JavaScript is defining a variable and it's setting the variable equal to our search term. So our context at the moment is that we are inside a string. We are inside those single quotes. And our objective is to break out of that string and to be able to write arbitrary JavaScript. So we'll see if we can terminate our string early by making use of our own single quote, followed by a semicolon. And we'll see if we can input alert function, because if we can, that will be a successful cross site scripting attack. Now this won't work at first, but it will give us a clue on how to proceed when we see how exactly this gets injected into the JavaScript. So let's run that search term. So looking at that JavaScript, although the JavaScript didn't execute the alert function, we can see that we have successfully broken out of that string because we have var search terms equals Zen shell, our semicolon, our alert function ending with a semicolon. Then we have a lone single quote. And what's going to happen here is that lone single quote is going to be breaking the JavaScript because it's not valid syntax. So we need a way of making that single quote valid syntax. So let's just see if we can modify our attack here. So we'll say Zen shell alert, and we just need a statement that would ordinarily end with a single quote. So we can just create a new variable. So we can do something let my var equals test. Notice we don't have a trailing single quote there. We're really just writing this to absorb that lone single quote, which is currently breaking the syntax at the moment. So if we run this, we get the alert echoed to the page. So we have proof of concept here, proof of cross-site scripting attack. Now taking a look at our JavaScript, we have var search terms equals Zen shell, semicolon, alert function, semicolon, and just an arbitrary JavaScript statement that ends with a single quote, let my var equals test. So it's now completely valid JavaScript. As soon as we've broken out of that JavaScript string, we can write any valid JavaScript that we want to. Now I've shown you this method just because it was how I solved the lab, but it's actually slightly verbose. We don't need that arbitrary JavaScript statement at the end. So here's a slightly more concise way of solving this lab. We break out of our string. Now we don't actually need a search term, so we're doing something like search term and a trailing single quote. We don't need that because we can just have an empty string plus alert plus single quote. Now, if we run that, that's going to solve the lab as well. Let's take a look at the JavaScript. So we can see we've confined our exploit to a single statement here. We have var search terms equals empty string plus alert function plus empty string. Now in other programming languages, we might get some kind of error here because we are attempting to add a string with a function, but just due to the nature of JavaScript being a dynamically typed language, it allows us to do this type of thing. So this is perfectly valid JavaScript. 
All right, thanks very much for watching guys. Hopefully you learned a little something about reflected cross-site scripting.